um, to see the reaction video, reaction video, reaction video, reaction videos, and everything was just, it really overwhelms Woo! me. Did you hear that? Kumusta kayo? Mabuhay! Welcome back to MGN Diego. Ako po si Ovela. And I reacted like two days ago to uh, Catriona Gray, Miss Universe 2018. It was her interview with Ryan Seacrest. And it was fun to watch, but I felt like it was too short. Um, I felt like uh, it was rushed. You know, they asked her like two or three questions. And I felt like they didn't have time to go more in depth, in depth with uh, Catriona Gray. And that is why I asked you to send me uh, more interviews of uh, Miss Universe 2018 so that we can learn more about her and her journey and her uh, mission. And uh, one of the videos that you guys actually sent me is Miss Universe Catriona Gray on Build Series HD. Well, this one is about 30 minutes long. So... If you're at work and you are allowed to, um, you know, stream or listen to podcasts or whatever, then that's what you should do. You should listen to it as a podcast. Or if you don't have, uh, you know, you're not allowed to, then wait after work, get home, you know, drink some coffee and, and eat something and watch this, you know. Uh, so, yeah, let's do this. Without further ado, let's discover Miss Universe Catriona Gray in depth this time. And it's in New York, once again, I think. Ooh, I like this intro. I like the graphic design. Catriona Gray was just 13 years old when her mom had a dream that she would become Miss Universe, walking along the stage in a red dress. And on December 16th, just days before her 25th birthday, the woman previously known as Miss Philippines did just that. Now as Miss Universe 2018, Catriona is dedicated to changing the lives of other children to allow them to follow their own dreams. Let's take a listen to her talking about her platform. Her up will take her place. Good luck to you both and the new Miss Universe is the new Miss Universe is Philippines Philippines I know it by heart now <laughs> Steve Harvey's voice is engraved in my brain. That's how many times I heard him say Miss Philippines or Philippines. Take your first walk as Miss Universe. Give them that lava walk, girl. Show them those beautiful legs. Uh -huh. Look at her waving like the queen of England. Come on, let's move on to the interview. We've seen this before. Thank wow, you all look at the angel behind her. us tonight. And a special thanks to Ashley, Carson, and Lou. I'm Steve Harvey. Good I'm <laughs> That's crazy. I'm sitting here like beaming watching that. I obviously was not the person who became Miss Universe 2018. Um, and the one thing that I have to ask, I'm sure you hardly remember it, um, but I know Demi, who was the previous Miss Universe, was the one that crowned you, and I noticed that she whispered something in your ear. And every time I've watched this, I want to know what she said. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, she was like, it's a little bit loose, so be careful it doesn't fall off. Oh. It was as practical as that. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm so happy to be here. My name is Catriona, and I've been looking forward to this interview all week. Oh, I'm very excited. Yeah. Well, we have the crown right here, and I'm super excited about that, too, because it is beautiful. 
beautiful and I might just have to steal it. Um, but I like that it was something She'll as bite practical your hand as off that because I thought it was going to be something like super inspiring. Whatever, and that would have just gone <laughs> Sorry, through one point. ear and out the other at that point. So any advice, I'm sure you could have gotten at that point. Oh, so that thing around her, uh, her, you know, her body is not a bandana. You guys said it was a sash. I believe that's the term for it, a sash. Was welcomed. Well, I think at that point, I was just, um, you know, I, I don't know if you guys have ever known this, or, or like when you get into that situation and your adrenaline's pumping and everything's just happening at a million miles an hour, and I couldn't absorb anything. <laughs> that whole night after the crown was placed on my head just felt like I was in a dream state. Yeah. It didn't feel real yet. It's understandable. Which, you know, I know a lot of girls say this, but it's true. And and then how it's the excitement. How do you even process something that would happen in a matter of seconds mm -hmm. to be announced as Miss Universe? It really just takes so long to sink in. And I mean, it's not your first time being crowned and getting an incredible title. Mm. So even when you became Miss Philippines, how does that compare to now becoming Miss Universe? It's so different because um, competing for Miss Philippines, I really just feel like I'm a candidate. I'm. I wonder when she became Miss Philippines. Was it like two years ago or something like that? I'm not representing my country just yet. Um, so when I do get the honor of knowing that I'll wear a Philippine sash, I really wanted sash. to embody in every aspect. So even as a Miss Philippines in my wardrobe, I wanted to showcase the Filipino textiles, our fabrics, our silhouettes and our symbolism. Um, and I researched about our culture and our history. And you know, there was so much more weight to it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just I'm candidate number this. I'm a Miss Philippines and this sash. Mm -hmm. And that is why the entire Philippines is very proud of her for really representing the Philippines, not just, you know, as a title, but also in her wardrobe with, uh, you know, her earpiece and everything and uh, the walk, the lava walk, the everything. So she really incorporated the Philippines in every aspect of Miss Universe. And that's awesome. She's not just lettering it's a country mm -hmm. so there was that weight yeah definitely and even hearing you talk about that i can't even imagine um then getting whisked away to new york of all places so you were in thailand representing the philippines and then you get taken to america and oh okay so that 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 was going to be one of my questions is where was miss universe held you know 2018 so if I understand well, it was in Thailand, and after that she came to uh, to New York, where it's super cold because I mean it's north uh, south of uh, Montreal, like six hours something like that. So it's probably really cold as well in New York right now. And it's just I, it's so much, and I'm sure you kind of just lose track of who you are, what you're even doing in those moments. Um, now that you're settled here. Is it crazy to think that you're representing? Does she think, does the host think that Katriona Gray does not know, uh, you know, uh, I guess, developed countries or whatever? Because Katriona Gray, I'm pretty sure that she must have traveled the world. I mean, she studied in the States, you know, like she has a, a master's in a musical... Um, theory or something like that so she knows the states she's she's traveled she's a well-spoken person you know so uh, what is she talking about dang the philippines but now you're living in the u.s yeah so no definitely um there is that that whole realization of a oh, wait I'm, I'm not just speaking uh, mainly to filipinos anymore i'm speaking to a global audience and with that comes an amazing platform but also i really have to learn as i go along like wow what an amazing and huge responsibility i've been given yes um so true. i'm really just learning every step of the way um actually after i was i'm um, crowned in thailand in bangkok i was able to go back home to the philippines okay bangkok so i i hid all christmas <laughs> 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 um because we haven't done any media we're going back for my homecoming but so i was just I was a hermit for Christmas and New Year, but um, you know, everyone was just so excited. Everyone's spirits were so high. And you know, just to think that I was able to bring that kind of joy to mm -hmm. people that I've never met, um, to see the reaction video, reaction video, reaction video, reaction videos, and everything was just, it really overwhelms Woo! me. Did you hear that? Reaction video. So she watches the reaction videos. Awesome. And it really just makes me feel like, 
wow, I, I, I was able to bring joy to people. What an amazing thing. Mm -mm. And you talking about that universal platform, I think you're kind of the perfect person for this role. Um, you grew up in Australia, your dad is Scottish, you and your go. mom is Filipino, and then you moved to the Philippines. You also went to school in the US? Yes, I studied by correspondence. Okay, Yeah. so you kind of have done it, seen it all, I feel like. So how are you going to take those experiences and living in these two very different countries and experiencing different cultures mm -hmm. into your role as Miss Universe? Um, I really feel that growing up in a cohesion of cultures really made me have an open mind to how different cultures can yep. be. Yep, she's an international um, different traditions person that they carry, like me. How that makes them affect how they... And I say like me because for those of you who don't know, I lived in Algeria, Morocco, Kenya, the States, Canada, and I've been to a few other countries, you know, just as a visitor too treat different people, how they go about their lives, the values that are ingrained to them. So I grew up with that, with the best of both worlds, I really feel like. And um, I was, I had the pleasure of traveling a lot in my life. Mm -hmm. So that's what um, I, was I think saying. it really helped me just have an open mind to be more understanding. And I think that's one of the beauties of a competition like Miss Universe, where you get women from all over the world coming together and we get to share about not only like our favorite places in our country or to find out where we want to go, but also like, how is it that we go about our daily lives? What are our values that were taught to us by our families? What was ingrained to us by our societies or our communities? And it opens up the most interesting conversations. And I think that's a great thing. Yeah. Yeah, I even saw just um, doing some research and seeing what people were saying on Twitter. There were a ton of people from Australia that were like, wait, she's ours, um, mm. which I thought was really funny. That's the beef, man. No, she's not Filipina. She's Australian. Na, 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 na. I wonder if there was like a Twitter beef between Australians and the Filipinos. Um, and also, like, was it weird at all to be competing against Miss Australia? Um, no, because I really feel like I miss Philippines. Um, I just, yeah, I feel like a Filipina, like a Filipina woman. Um, it just so happens that um, when I was growing up, I was very much an Australian. And I think you can be both. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I did grow up with those two sides of the world, if you would. Um, and, and I just... But that's the thing. Like, she is, uh, her blood is Filipino and Irish. Uh, sorry, why, could, well, why do I keep saying Irish? Scottish, right? Uh, so she does not have Australian blood. She is blood, uh, she is Australian by citizenship. That's it. I mean, still, she is Australian, but, you know, it's, it's, it, the bl blood thing is strong, you know, so that's why she feels more Filipina than Australian. I just thought it was funny that the, there was almost a war, like, no, she's ours, she's, practically a Miss Australia, but I am a Miss Philippines, but I can't blame them from being excited, from, you know, really feeling the high spirits of the season too. So I'll let them have that. <laughs> well, you've also competed. You were Little Miss Philippines. I was. Yeah, like, so um, you've, you've rocked this title for a while. <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about those younger experiences? I think it's so funny because everyone always says, like, this can't be your first pageant. And I try to tell them I'm really not a pageant girl. I never dreamed of being a beauty queen, which is true. But it's mm -hmm. hard to justify when it's like, well, when you were five, you were in Little Miss <laughs> Philippines, right? Blame my mom for that. <laughs> So she was Miss Philippines twice as a kid and as a, an adult. That is nuts, man. So she's won three pageants. Wow. Well, basically, she was meant to, to do this. My mom and my dad are just the proudest parents, um, and I'm very blessed to have such supportive parents. And yeah, I was five years old. I did Little Miss Philippines. I don't remember much, but I know mm. that in the talent competition, I danced and lip synced to Stop Right Now by the Spice Girls. Nice. That's amazing. I had a matching silver Stop outfit, right and I was just, yeah, I was feeling myself. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And you're, you are lip singing, but you actually sing. Yeah. So you went um, to school for music. Can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about that? 
I have a master's certificate in music theory from Berkeley. There and you go. music is just something that's really been throughout my whole life. Um, I grew up with three generations of music because my dad was born in the 40s, my mom was born in the 60s, and I'm born in the 90s. So you can imagine our radio mm. at home is always skipping oh, around the different sister, generations. I was, born in the I was 80s. always in school choir growing up. I was the leader of my jazz band. I was in musicals. So I don't know. It just. I had never planned on pursuing me. She's my little sister who's taller than I am. My God. Apparently, because you guys answered my question, apparently she is 5'10". And from time to time, people say that she's 5'11", but she's actually 5'10 and a half. That is tall. Like, she could play basketball, you know, WNBA. Music, but when I think about it, it's really something that I've always been passionate about. It's always something that brought me so much joy. So, yeah. It's something well, I definitely duh, you're want Filipina. to pursue. And, so and actually, blood. a month and a half ago, I believe, I actually released my first original called We're In This Together. Oh my Woo! God, that's amazing. Yeah. That I reacted you, to. Like, I feel like you're Patreon. like the true triple threat when I hear about <laughs> all of this. Um, but the one thing that you're talking a ton about is obviously your childhood and your foundation, your roots with your parents and growing up. Um, and I think that's really important to your platform because now you're kind of looking to give back to children and invest in their education. So can you tell us about your platform a little bit? Yeah, so of course, I grew up in Australia and then I found myself in the Philippines. I had never experienced poverty firsthand. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, I've seen it on the TV, on the news, on, on social media feeds. But um, when I was able to experience... Yeah, but once you go to the slums and reality hits you in the face, that's what you re that's when you really understand what poverty is, man. Like, wow, the slums. Like I went to the slums in uh in uh, Nairobi. Wow, Kenya. I think it's like the biggest slum in uh, Africa and it's 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 heartbreaking. It's scary too just to see how people live there. It's wow. Experience it myself like being there um and seeing it and sensing it with all of my senses and and just seeing the reality of it mm -hmm. it impacted me so strongly um especially i found myself in a place called tondo manila mm -hmm. it's literally within manila our capital city of the philippines Woo! and it's known as a garbage dump where all of the trash from the city goes and families there the majority of them make a living from scavenging through the trash and finding and selling recyclables to feed their families can you believe that you could actually make a living from scavenging you know the 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 rest of other people's uh, you know trash and belongings it's crazy man it's crazy sad so if you can imagine, the scenery there is quite, it, it, it's, it's very, um, it really impacted me when I saw it. Um, and in the heat of the summer day, these families, they don't have air cons, they don't have proper homes. And if you imagine that impact on the children, where they don't even have toys to play with, but they find things in the trash. And, mm -hmm. you know, some of them don't get the reality of an education. And maybe if they do get, end up going to school, they get pulled up or out early just to help their families make ends meet. Mm -hmm. So when I saw this, I was like, how lucky am I that I was born into a circumstance that I was able to be given an education? And these children were just born into the circumstance. It's not fair. So that's why I'm so passionate well, about life education. Is not fair, that's education for sure. also because I feel that if you give a child an education, it's something that they can never lose. Mm -hmm. And it's also a way to break the cycle of poverty. You know, if, if you give a child an education and give them a love for learning, they could have an academic career and then hopefully find work that could pull their family out of that circumstance. So I work with an organization called Young Focus Philippines, mm -hmm. and they give free, Young Focus um, Philippines. free education and free access y to quality education. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And I know you've spent some time with those kids as well, right? Yeah, I've worked in Tondo as like, I help out in class, you know, with storytelling and, Aww. you know, the little games and songs that they teach the kids. It's so really a creative cute. environment that's colorful because we want children to fall in love with learning at a young age. And so I work a lot with the younger kids. I've also worked with some of the teens because a lot of them have dropped out of school or they just don't have an interest in school. So it's really engaging them again and, and finding something that they're interested in and want to pursue that's so awesome thank you um and 
uh, I'm looking at her outfit and the thing that I really like here are her uh, heels because of the fade, you know, it goes from, what is it, beige yellow to black. I love that fade. Speaking of your platform, mm -hmm. I also have to tie this into social media a little bit because yeah. the Miss Universe pageants have gone beyond the time when social media even existed. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like it's such a huge part. And I couldn't it help is. but notice that you gained three million followers in two to three weeks or something crazy like that. Oh, crazy. So <laughs> what kind of role do you think wow. social media is now playing in the pageant and then now getting your platform out there. Um, like to first off say like that leap in followers was just, it, it took me by so much surprise because I still feel like the same girl from a year. I wonder on which platform, um, I'm thinking maybe Instagram, but they're probably talking about all platforms together, like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube probably. But if I had to choose one, that probably would be Instagram year ago you know I don't feel like I've changed that much but to see that I have such this 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 huge platform now and so many people are listening to what I have to say it really makes me want to orientate towards something that will really educate people create awareness do something more than you know show them a cute outfit or what I'm <laughs> having for lunch um, but social media has definitely um, revolutionized or transformed the world of pageantry and not just pageantry but any social cause that we like to lend our voice to or how we inform each other how we connect um, and that's why I think it's a powerful powerful tool that really has the potential to do so much good mm -hmm. and that's what as Miss Universe I really want to utilize as a tool to as I said educate create awareness draw people to causes that they might not have known about or, you know, connect them to it in some way, somehow see themselves in that person or in that cause or... Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think social media is an amazing thing if used the right way. I mean, I can imagine having 4 million followers <laughs> is a bit overwhelming, <laughs> especially when you get them, like, that fast. Right? You're like, what do I do? What do I post? What do I say? I Everybody's realize. listening. Everybody's mm -hmm. watching. Mm -hmm. um, and including some of your fans are some pretty big names now, which I think is very exciting. <laughs> um, I know that Tyra Banks actually retweeted ooh, ooh. one of your walks from the pageant. I died. So I was, <laughs> we were, we were having dinner um, after rehearsals. For those of you who don't know Tyra Banks, Tyra Banks is like, uh, what, the biggest uh, fashion, well, I don't know about fashion, but more like modeling icon out there. You know, she's the one who created America's Next Top Model. She's been an actress and everything. So yeah. She's huge. Um, and, and literally, I was just sitting there, and we're all tired, and I just ate, so I'm having a bit of a food coma, and I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting there, and then I start getting tagged, and it's Tyra Banks. <laughs> and I just no, look around to my table, and like no one's noticing that I'm freaking out, and then I go to my friend, <laughs> Miss Denmark and Sweet, I'm like, Tyra Banks just tweeted at me. <laughs> it's crazy, and like, you know, it, it's, I, it's, the, f the phenomenon of pageantry, the way that it's able to reach so many different markets or countries. I'm sorry, but the hostess is bothering me because she has no charisma, you know, she's not bubbly, she's not really laughing with her. I feel like she's not making Katriona Gray comfortable and it's really irking me, man. It's like, come on, it's a big deal for Katriona, just be happier trees and people is just crazy and to have Tyra Banks like comment on my walk I was just like oh my gosh if Tyra approves then I'm you know <laughs> Tyra approved so that's all you need yo I agree her walk one of her walks was so sultrous how do you say that I think that's the term sultrous you know it was classy and sexy at the same time and that's probably a hard walk to to do so good job okay. <laughs> um, but even you talking about pageantry and touching so many people, I know that especially um, in the U.S., I'm not sure about in other places, mm. but there is some criticism of pageantry and the whole idea of beauty pageants. Right. Um, yes. So I wanted to know a little bit about your experience as Miss Philippines. If, you know, pageantry is looked at in a different way or even how you combat some of those um, more negative criticisms. Mm -hmm. I can totally see how some people can have a negative perception of beauty pageants, but I feel that that's drawn from a surface perspective. Um, they don't really see the journeys of the girls themselves or what they represent. I think 
uh, it's not like that anymore. I think uh, Miss Universe has evolved. Like in the past, probably it was still very shallow. It was more about the looks and not about the mission and the message. But over time, I think it really evolved. Like yes, it starts. It starts with the look, and then the what's really important is the opportunity that this person is given to make a change in the world. Because these days, especially with the women that I've competed with in Miss Universe and the women that I've talked to, they all have causes or they all have a, a bigger reason for wanting to pursue Miss Universe. And usually it's about the platform, which is so amazing to see because I think we're also showing that women can be so multifaceted. Like we can't just be a model, but you could be someone who also is such a lawyer, eyebrows. a budding Beautiful. doctor, or, you know, we're, we're so multifaceted. And I think when you really see what we're, we're trying to represent, what we're trying to do with the platform of pageantry, that will kind of change some people's perspectives. As a Miss Philippines, we love pageants. Yeah. Like, <laughs> is it obvious? That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, th this problem, if it still exists, does not exist in the Philippines. Like, it's a national sport in the Philippines and everybody loves it. So there's no problem uh, there in the Philippines. Yes, like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't have Super Bowl, but we have the three Bs, which is boxing, basketball and beauty pageants. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, as a Miss Philippines, there is a, well, not even as a Miss Philippines yet, as a candidate, there is a certain pressure. Because and if I say big baller brand, do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> because it's the three Bs as well. And this is more related to basketball. It's uh, Lonzo Ball's father's uh, company. Lonzo Ball is the um, point guard of the Lakers right now. And uh, his father built a company called Big Baller Brand, so BBB. <laughs> because so many people get so passionate about candidates and who's competing and everything. And there's, if I had to develop anything as a candidate, it was mental fortitude. Because... Really? To be bombarded on social media with both pos positive and negative comments, um, it was really hard, you oh, know, to I always understand. have a thick skin because someone can say to you, "Hey, just don't worry about what they say." But there are times mm -hmm. that something will get to you, a comment will will hurt. Mm -hmm. So it's really just building up that mental fortitude that I had to do as a candidate. Um, I just remember why I'm doing what I'm doing. Those comment hurts when you are vulnerable, you know, when you're like tired at the end of the day and basically there is like an opening in your soul, you know, at that point because you let, you let your guard down and that's when those comments hurt. So yeah, that sucks. Because I've been doing my charity work for three years, which is longer than my pageant career. And, and that was just something that always anchored me in what I'm doing, made it worthwhile. Like, why am I pursuing this platform? This is the reason why. I love those three Bs. Right? <laughs> now when you think of Philippines, it's like the three Bs. The three Bs. <laughs> it's so funny because when I was watching, I felt like the entire audience was rooting for you and even when you won it was like Philippines everywhere so I can't imagine um coming together with all these other contestants like how that works and how you know you have a little bit of a different motivation than some of these other people and I can imagine you were looking out in the crowd and seeing so many people from your country yeah, like I, I, I was thinking backstage, maybe I want to go out and do a little bit of a fierce moment here or whatever. <laughs> but then I would see the Filipino flags and just the fans and their faces like just lit up. And I would just I would break out into a smile like every yeah. time I stepped out onto that stage that night, every time I saw a supporter, I heard the word Philippines or saw a flag like the joy that would come over me that I was able to be there and, and give, you know, give my country such pride. It's pride, it just, yes. Like, I look back at it as one of the fondest aspects of my journey, which is the support. Not even just from Filipinos, but from supporters all around the world. The way that they carry the candidates through and the way that they support them is just... You would never think that they would, but for example, I've had experience where um, supporters would be like, I know you're staying at this hotel if you need anything, if you want... I love how she talks because she's really embracing her uh, ambassador of the Philippines role, you know? Like, she's talking about Filipinos, but she's not forgetting the rest of the world. 
And that's what a real diplomat does. Want late night snacks. If you want, you know, a repair on a dress, tell us. And these are people that I don't know, but that they're willing to do that for you just shows their level of love and dedication just to support you. And I think that's, that's really something special. That's also the perks of 4 million followers. Because now you can, <laughs> living in New York, you oh, can just say, on, hey, I want some Shake followers. Shack and you'll have it delivered to you. But Uber Eats is like... It's not what's important here. <laughs> um, also, did that kind of support just on that stage in particular mm -hmm. give you some sort of comfort that maybe made the pageant a little easier, less nerve-wracking? It definitely ca like it give, makes my spirits high mm -hmm. all throughout. Just to hear... You know, every time I step out, I can hear the support, and that alone just it's also makes me feel like we have a phrase you don't want that point. I, laban, which means fighting. Um, laban. So I just wanted to give my best, just to make those people proud. You know that they came all the way out there. Look how they're supporting me. They deserve the best performance that I can give. Amazing. Um, and then, <laughs> since we're in New York, I just have to ask: You've settled. <laughs> In how long have you been here? Five days. Okay. Yeah. Settled, I'm fresh. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to about living in New York? There are so many things to do. Yeah. So many places to eat. So many things to see. Oh, <laughs> I'm a little bit overwhelmed because um, there's just so much that I want to do. There's so many places I want to go. Broadway plays I want to see. Um, I want to try and watch some live music. I want to eat everywhere <laughs> mm -hmm. um so yeah i think really you can find everything in new york and the people that you meet are from all different corners of the world all different walks of life and i think that gives it such an amazing energy so i love it so far besides the weather I was besides the say, cold and winter <laughs> you're into that too <laughs> i mean trying to look nice while being warm is like an impossible balance it's to impossible, achieve can yeah. i just say there are people who are amazing i walked out the other day and saw someone in like ballet flats and a dress and i was what is their superpower yeah. can they let me mm -hmm. in on a trick or something <laughs> and the best thing is everything inside is just like the opposite right so it's you're freezing outside and, and then toasty, like toasted yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you'll you'll get used to it eventually hopefully so. yeah <laughs> um so now we're gonna head over to some audience questions i think we have one from twitter cool. twitter oh Oh, okay. So somebody says, could you tell us the insecurities you overcame after winning the crown or any insecurities you still have today? Good luck on your media. I have insecurities just like anyone else. Everyone, I think people have a perception that once you're successful, once you achieve a certain thing, that your life will be perfect. You'll never have a complaint. You'll never have a down date. That is not the case. Mm -hmm. um, I have, I have bad days or days where I feel overwhelmed or like, Am I doing the right thing? Is this um, the right decision? Or I just feel not put together today. I'm having a bad hair day. You know, just silly things like that. And especially as a public figure, there are so many people who have these expectations of me to always look a certain way. Like I have experience, and I'm sure going forward in this year, I'll experience is people always expect beauty queens to be done up 24 seven. Like we wake up with our hair and makeup on fleek, which is <laughs> not, <laughs> no, <laughs> not fleek. at all. Um, so it's just things like that, dealing with people's expectations and just, you know, accepting myself for who I am. Sometimes I'll have a breakout. Sometimes I'll feel really lost and overwhelmed or emotional. You know, it happens. And I have insecurities just like everyone else. That's and just it's just humanity. a That's constant it. pep talk I need to give myself every day. No one's it's like, perfect. you know what? You might not be feeling good today, but, you know, there's so many things to be grateful for. You know, just go out and have the best day that you can. Hope that tomorrow you'll be in a better mood. You know, just things like that. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. And then we have three in the audience. <laughs> Hi, the guys. The hostess has nothing to say. Uh, that's buhai. awesome. Mabuhai. Mabuhai. Uh, congratulations. And uh, thank you for making us overseas Filipinos very proud of you. Thank you. Um, my question is, uh, aside from uh, charity with the uh, children, mm -hmm. Do you want to lend your pla uh, your platform to um, uh, animal welfare or the environment uh, in general? Yeah, definitely. You know, as a Miss Universe, I'm not constrained to how many causes I can lend my voice to. And it's uh, something well that I really want to achieve this year is really just make as much as of an impact, positive impact that I possibly can, whether it be through the many causes or just 
quality, um, making a qualitative difference to a few causes, whatever makes the most difference or whatever opportunity I, opportunity I have, I wanna take it. So definitely um, another cause that I'm very passionate about is being an advocate for HIV and AIDS. And you know, it's just as something I'm passionate about is breaking down the stigma to, so that people can feel that they can just get tested without having that fear. So yeah, definitely. Uh, in my reign, I hope that I can really push as many causes as I can. See, Thank the woman you. does it all. I, guys. <laughs> I try, I try. <laughs> uh, hi, Catriona. Hello. Congratulations again on your title. Thank um, you. So I wanted to ask you, what was the best advice you had gotten from um, previous Miss Philippines title holders? Mm. Um, this piece of advice was from Rachel Peters, who is my predecessor. Um, she just told me, take every day as it comes. Because um, she told me that you can get overwhelmed because it is such a high pressure environment. You know how much expectation is on you. Um, but just take it day by day, which, you know, it's a very simple advice, but I really did apply it throughout the pageant. I would take every day as it comes. Because if you start out on day one and you're like, oh my gosh, they're watching everything that we do, or you just you overthink and you overprocess and then you Don't start too to, much pressure to on kind yourself. of coil up in stress. I just tried to be like, okay, I just have to get through this day. Do my best on this day, next day too. So yeah. <laughs> That goes back to something that your dad taught you too. Yes, right? I know one you small a step at a time. Yeah, to reach your destination or final journey. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -mm. And then we have one more. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm a pageant girl myself. Mm -hmm. So, what are some advice you would give any kind of pageant girl on wanting to be the next Miss Universe? Okay, I wish you the best, firstly, mm -hmm. in whatever pageant you pursue or whatever your dreams are in pageantry. Um, something that I really stay true to is what my values are and my uniqueness, if that makes sense. So, for an example, I'm a very creative person, so I interjected out. that into every part of my journey. I was really hands-on in my wardrobe to how my final look yeah that's very important what she said like you have to embrace your uniqueness know what your strength is you have to know what your uniqueness is and then you gotta exploit that you know you gotta dwell deep into that so that you could shine amongst all the others look was um, up to my jewelry like everything I was my I was so hands-on and so I felt that when I walked out on that stage no matter what happened I knew that I felt comfortable I felt as beautiful as I as I could be and that I stayed true to myself and I think that's so important because in pageantry there will be people who may just have the best intention intentions as mentors saying you should wear this color do your hair like this walk like this smile like this but you need to have the final say you need to feel comfortable you mm -hmm. need to feel like you and that will shine through yeah i hope that's helpful <laughs> thank you well guess what you walked how you wanted and tyra <laughs> banks approved it so mm -hmm. <laughs> well thank you so much for joining us catriona it was so nice chatting with you Love and you i wish you all the luck for your reign as miss universe thank you so much for having me thank you all right well i loved this interview i really enjoyed the questions the only i guess negative aspect is really uh the hostess tone and energy but she had great questions uh man I love this Miss Universe. I love Katriona Gray. Uh, she answered the questions really well. You know, she has a good head on her shoulders. She is uh, grounded, you know. It really feels like her parents uh, are were like there uh, during throughout her entire childhood, you know. And they always back her up and... It's, it's beautiful to see, like, she is a very assured person and she knows what she wants. Uh, she knows that she's unique, just like we all are, you know, and you have to uh, embrace that. And uh, it's, it's also nice to see that she wants to help people and hopefully she'll be able to. And I don't think that they, you know, these Miss, Miss Universes should think that, oh, I can only do good things in this 
period of time, like one year just because I won and I got the funds or whatever. But like you saw, she got, what, 4 million followers? Man, she can do wonders with that in the future. Like, my God, even after she's not Miss Universe anymore, uh, she still be able to make a difference with uh, uh, the the number of followers. I mean, just with the name now. Like, now she's going to be famous and everything. So, yeah, she'll be able to make a difference for the rest of her life, really, if she wanted to. Um, but, yeah, I loved her answers. Yeah, just like I said, she really sounds like an ambassador, a diplomat. And uh, I appreciate that very much. Okay, so I'm going to cut this short because the video is already very long. But, yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of uh, her interview. This interview was uh, longer but also be better than the previous one that I reacted to because we uh, we got to really know what, what her mission is is you know we got to know more about her and that's awesome so yeah have a great day and uh, i will see you in the next video peace thanks for watching remember to like the video subscribe here and wonderful things will happen and turn on your notification bell to be poked for future content yeah yeah yeah